Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2023 Chevy Equinox, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. Uh, before we get into that though, why don't we just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. Before we jump right in, I figured it'd be useful just to touch base and refresh ourselves on the main parts that we're gonna need to flat tow our Equinox down the road in the first place. Um, first component will be your base plate. What that's going to do is provide us with a solid and reliable uh, connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. Tow bar is that second component, and this is going to be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Equinox to the back of your coach. The third main component will be safety cables. These are pretty straightforward. You know, these are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect to keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be tow bar wiring. And what this is gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your uh, RV to the back of your Equinox, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main part will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Chevy whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, bringing you to a more complete and predictable stop. Something else that I do highly recommend for the Equinox is picking up a battery charge line kit. And what this is gonna do is maintain uh, your battery voltage whenever you're flat towing, with, which on this vehicle is especially important because not only is your supplemental braking system using battery power whenever you're towing, but since Equinox has electric assisted power brakes, uh, the factory braking system is also gonna use battery power. So. What can happen over time towing, you know, if this battery gets depleted enough, the braking components won't work as they should, uh, kind of defeating the whole purpose of having all this stuff on here. So a charge line kit is gonna maintain the battery and prevent that from happening. This is what your Equinox can look like whenever you're not towing it behind your motor home, which I feel like is important because you're not always gonna be doing that right. And in terms of the appearance, I really don't think it can get much better, to be honest with you. Um, all the parts are kind of a matte black finish. They kind of match our grill, the plastic, pretty well. And uh, everything just kind of makes sense where it's at. You know, it's easy to get to and uh, be able to hook up your components really easily. Whenever you are ready to set up, um, you can pull out the plugs that they give you, which is a nice touch, just uh, kind of helps make it look better and keep dirt and junk uh, from getting inside of the base plate. But you'll have these removable arms, and the way these are going to work is you're just going to slide it into the base plate, and then rotate it about a quarter turn until it locks into place, and you'll have the same deal on the other side. Those tabs that we put in create an attachment point, that way we can hook up our tow bar. So it's all quick connect type stuff. Line up the end of the uh, tow bar there with the base plate, run your pin and clip through. The base plate's gonna be compatible with Blue Ox tow bars and other manufacturers as well. Uh, today we have a good example of that. We have the Roadmaster Nighthawk uh, and we're able to pair it up because there's Blue Ox adapter ends that that you can use. So if you already happen to have a, uh, another brand tow bar and you're hoping to use it, chances are pretty good you can pick up adapters that way you don't have to buy a whole new tow bar. I do like the safety chain openings on our base plate as well. They come out super easy to get to and big enough to let us use pretty much any size uh, hook that our tow bar might have. This is what your flat tow setup can look like whenever you are towing behind the motorhome. And uh, because of how the base plate is designed, uh, it's gonna help keep everything organized. It's easy to take a quick glance back here, make sure everything's hooked up right, easy to set up. And it's just the little things too. Um, you know, like for example, the base plate actually has some uh, brackets that come off of it and give you a perfect spot to mount up your wiring connector. So, um, you know, that just makes things easy. You don't really have to fabricate or kind of come up with you know crazy ideas to to get this type of thing mounted up compared to some of the other base plates available honestly i think this one's probably going to look the best but you know that's just my opinion aside from that they're all going to work just fine give you that attachment point and uh and let you hook your tow bar up to it so you know at the end of the day 
A good choice for the Equinox, at least in my opinion, with the appearance and how easy it is to use. Really can't ask for too much more. As far as the installation goes, uh, it's not the hardest one I've done, nor the easiest, somewhere in the middle there. It does take some time. You will have to, uh, you know, drill some holes and, and do some things like that. So, you know, just stay focused and you should be in pretty good shape. But with that said, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our Equinox. You can go ahead and pop the hood and we're going to have to remove our front fascia. So the fasteners we're going to start with. We're gonna have a total of six here on this top edge or three on each side. Here's what they're gonna look like. I'm gonna use a T15 Torx bit to get them all removed. We can move to our front wheel well uh, now, and if you turn your tires uh, all the way to one side, it'll make it easier to get to these five fasteners along this edge here. So we'll get all those removed, and I'm using a T15 to get these pulled out as well. Once we have them all removed, you can peel the wheel well liner back. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. In this corner here where the fascia meets the quarter panel, there's going to be a seven millimeter head screw. So we can grab our socket and get it removed. Along the front bottom edge of our fascia underneath, we're gonna have three seven millimeter head screws uh, that will pull out here. And there will be a fourth one kind of tucked up here in this corner. And here's a better look at that uh, other fastener that we need to pull out there in the corner. What we need to do now, we're gonna have this chrome piece that runs along our headlight and we have to unsnap that. And you want to be really careful with this part because this is all one piece in our fascia. So we don't want to break it and it's pretty brittle. So I put some painter's tape around here where we're going to be working. And um, also just kind of lift it up on this corner here to try to kind of loosen things up. And you can spray soapy water in that seam too. That seems to help uh, sometimes. But there's just some clips behind there that's holding this in place. And you can take these plastic trim tools and just kind of carefully work, work your way down here to try to get it unsnapped. And so sometimes it'll just take a little, you know, a little uh, finesse here to kind of work your way down and you know, if it's super tight, don't, don't force it. Try to move down a little bit uh, to keep loosening everything up. But uh, everything just kind of popped out of place. And there's the uh, little snaps that were actually holding this into position. So now that we're free, we're in good shape. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our fascia removed. So you start at the corners here. And again, I just shot some soapy water in there to make it a little bit easier but you're just gonna unsnap it, work your way around. And when it comes off, don't pull it off entirely just yet. Sometimes you might have some wiring, which it looks like on the passenger side, there is gonna be a connector there. So there's gonna be two connectors. We'll disconnect. This one, you just push down on the middle there, pull it out, and then this one up here, push down on that red tab and then down in the middle of the connector to separate it and it's also got a push pin holding that wiring on so you could just pry that out of the way there 
Now we are completely released. We'll set our fascia off to the side somewhere safe. We are gonna to need to remove our driver's side headlight. So there's gonna be a handful of seven millimeter head fasteners. I have one there in this corner in the engine compartment. We'll have one here on the side as well. One of them will also be in the front, kind of buried uh, back a little ways. With those out, we can grab our headlight here. And there is an electrical connector that we'll have to disconnect. Kind of tucked in here a little ways, but it's gonna remove the same exact way that we uh, uh, remove that one from the fascia. You know, you got that red tab to push down on. And again, right here, there's gonna be a, a push pin holding that wiring in place. So to get this popped free, just take our trim tool and work it out from there and get our light out of the way. And here's a better look at that connector. Uh, like I said, pop that red piece back and then push down on the center there. We are gonna need to remove our windshield uh, washer fluid bottle, but uh, I like to disconnect the lines first. So you'll have one here. And what I like to do on one of them is just put a mark. That way we know those two go back together. But the way these work, kind of pinch the sides of this. And while you're doing that, you can pull out and separate it. So that one's done. And there will be one more right here that will work the same exact way. A quick uh, trick too, if you got a full washer fluid bottle like we do, to stop this fluid from leaking out all over the place, you can actually just plug those two ends together and uh, that'll prevent it from, from spilling out. It's gonna be a handful of 10 millimeter fasteners actually holding our tank in. One of them will be right here. So we'll get that pulled out and move on to the next one. Before we remove any other fasteners, let's get this electrical disconnected. So you have the red tab and that. This connector is going to be a little bit different. With these, I like to take a flathead screwdriver, kind of come in from the bottom, and you'll feel a little plastic tab in there. You kind of pull out on it, and uh, it'll release that way. Moving back to the fasteners, you'll have a 10 millimeter right here. One right here. And there will be one final one, kind of in this corner down here. Here's that final one. Get that removed. And then that will allow us to grab our reservoir here and drop it down out of the way. We'll set it off to the side. Back underneath the vehicle, on the front, we're gonna have this flat, this air dam that comes down. There'll be three seven millimeter screws in it. And with this at very most inside one, I like to just loosen it some, that way you can just swing it out of the way. And that'll allow us to get to this screw here. And then we're just gonna continue to work our way across this whole plastic shield here, removing all of these seven millimeter fasteners. All the ones off on the side, you'll have one more seven mil uh, here in the center. You can remove that and then drop this down out of the way. On each side of this plastic air um, uh, dam deal here, we're gonna have two push pin fasteners. So you can pry underneath the head of those. 
pop them out and did the uh, ones on the other side already but this should come off and we can set it off to the side this air temperature sensor now we can pop that out so if you rotate it a little bit to the side that'll kind of pinch those uh, pieces there and you can pop it out the rest of this plastic shroud is also going to get removed from the vehicle so there's a couple of push pins um, you know holding that temperature sensor wiring in so you can just pry them out and then this whole piece we should be able to get it removed this pinch weld here is where our base plate's going to attach to and it's going to be too wide so we're going to have to tap it in just a little bit to give us the clearance that we need so uh, we'll take our hammer and just lightly tap this to get it to move a little bit We are going to need to remove our subframe bolt, which is this one here on each side of the vehicle. Since we got to pull these out at the same time, uh, I do highly recommend supporting the subframe with uh, a jack or something along them lines just to kind of have some extra support. But with that said, uh, 21 millimeter socket and we'll get them pulled out. So what we've done is taken our base plate and got it into position. You definitely want a friend to give you a hand with this because it's usually pretty tight, um, but it's gonna get pushed up over these flanges. Sometimes you have to come back and hammer them in more and make some adjustments, but you can take clamps and clamp the base plate to those flanges. And I think what uh, we're gonna do, there's a hole down here that's gonna line up and we're gonna take our subframe bolt and put that back in. That way this will have some support and the subframe will be resupported again and everything else. But that said, all the hardware that we're gonna to use to secure the base plate, you're gonna put some of the red Loctite on the thread. So just go ahead and get this one, uh, get this one started again. What I'm going to do is get, you know, these going on each side and then I'm just going to snug them up to help, uh, help kind of pull the base plate into position where we, where we want it to be. We can work on getting the side uh, attachment points all connected now. So what you want to make sure is try to get this top edge up as high as you can and this one back as far as you can. So if you need to take a, a hammer or something and kind of tap it, work it in place a little bit better, uh, you can do that. And since we're going to be drilling through here, we do have some components on the other side. Not super close, but uh, just for um, you know some peace of mind, I like to take a block of wood and put it back there. That way if you your drill goes way through, you know, it won't hit anything. But I'm gonna go right here in the middle and with the 3 8 bit, I'm gonna drill out that opening. Get our block of wood out of the way, that way we can get a bolt in there. So you can take this bolt, put on your Loctite. You're gonna pass that through. And then on the other side, you can take a nylon lock nut and get it started. And I'm gonna come back with a 9 16th wrench to hold the nut. And a 9 16th socket. I'm gonna snug these down. And then I'm just gonna repeat that same process one at a time for our other attachment points. So you got this one, this one, this one, and that one. Like we talked about, I got the rest of them drilled out and all the nuts and bolts in there and snugged up. And now we'll come back with a torque wrench 
and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. can grab our plastic air dam that we removed earlier and trim uh, it out that way we can get it reinstalled so I just marked where we're gonna be cutting it's the same on each side of this so I'm just gonna come in with uh, a pair of snips here and get that material removed This all trimmed out. Now we can kind of slide it back into position and re-secure it using those push pin fasteners. Now I went ahead, took that uh, air temperature sensor and simply just plugged it back into the opening there. Now you can install the safety cable. So with this, I just folded it in half, looped it around our frame and there's a, a hole in the base plate where you take your D-link, put it through those ends, through the cable end, and tighten the D-link down. And then what I like to do is take a zip tie or two and kind of zip tie anything that feels loose just to help prevent it from rattling uh, whenever we're going down the road. You can go ahead and reinstall your windshield washer fluid reservoir the opposite way that you removed it, really with one exception. This attachment point down here, since the base plate's there now, uh, it's a little bit thicker, so you're going to take the included bolt and flat washer that they give you and use that instead of the factory hardware. And again, that's just for this, this one attachment point down here. Also went ahead and reinstalled their headlight the opposite way that we removed it. Uh, with that said, now would be a great opportunity to install some of your other, of your other flat towing components like diode wiring or supplemental braking system. And I say that because with the fascia off, it's going to be much easier. You know, I got all this extra room to work. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. If you're not putting them on or you already have them installed, um, you know, you can trim your fascia and get it put back in place. But once I get all this other stuff done, we'll come back to that and I'll show you how I trimmed it and everything else. Now that we have installed the rest of our flat towing components, we can come back and get our front fascia put on. So right now, I just loosely have it in place, right? It's not bolted down or anything. And that's because we are gonna have to trim this out. So it looks like we won't have to take a whole lot out. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just cut out this small portion here. That way it'll clear our breakaway switch and our uh, uh, braking system air fitting. And I think if I cut that out, we should be able to push this almost on completely. And, or at least at the very least, give us a better idea on where we're gonna need to cut for our base plate uh, tabs to go in. So we'll start with this, got that marked out. We'll get it cut and go from there. To cut this, it's somewhat thin plastic. I don't even think I'm gonna pull it back off. I'm just gonna use this pair of snips, but you can use a Dremel tool or whatever you got around we'll get this opening cut and see if it'll push back and figure out what we need to do next i was able to get this stuff to pass through by making that one cut and uh, get the fascia push back almost into the perfect position but it is hitting those base plate tabs like we talked about so this gives us a really good idea on where we need to cut to clear all that. So we'll make a real simple cuts here. And that should let us push it back uh, completely into place. After cutting out these openings, the fascia was able to push on completely. Didn't have to make any more, uh, or have to do any more trimming there. So like I said, it pushed into place and from there, you just simply re-secure the fascia the opposite way that you removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2023 Chevrolet Equinox.